Hello everyone, Loremaster of Sotek here to bring you an exclusive interview I had with the developers of Total War Warhammer 3 alongside my good friend Turin. This video will contain the audio of the questions the two of us asked along with the answers from the developers and hopefully will provide lots of exciting details about the upcoming final game in the Total War Warhammer trilogy. I have done my best to edit the audio down to only just the questions and answers so hopefully you all will enjoy, and if you're having issue maybe hearing what the questions were, I will have a time-stamped list of the questions down below in the top comment and the description. I just want to take this opportunity again to thank Creative Assembly so very much for having me participate in this experience and allowing me to have the time to sit down and chat with the developers. So once again, I hope you all enjoy the video, and uh, yeah, here we go. Right on. Um, you want to start with a question, so Zach? Sure, uh, I will start with the question. Um, so something I noticed in the battle mode that piqued my curiosity, if y'all are ready to talk about this aspect of the game, is that uh, clearly the UI has undergone some pretty big upgrades. Uh, the thing that caught my attention first and foremost was the much larger Winds of Magic pool. Is that something that, I, I assume that's going to be something that's rolled into once the games are combined into sort of the, the mega game, but do y'all have any, is there like a main reason or idea behind why Warhammer 3 is seeing this larger expansion on Magic compared to the prior games? Well, um, that's something that's um, peculiar to this particular battle mode um, we wanted to give players you know plenty of winds of magic to to throw at the just the sheer number of enemies we're throwing at you um in this game mode and just to give a bit of context for why we've we've added this game mode to the to the game um obviously it kind of links back to the the main campaign and you know the the, the scale and the majesty of what players are are taking on at the point that they they enter one or, or, or other of the Chaos Gods' home realms. So um, obviously you'll be familiar with the kind of the, the epic scale of our battles. Um, we wanted to push things even further than that, you know, really just to hit the flavor and, like I say, the majesty of, of that challenge that, that players are, are taking on. So we wanted to push the numbers of enemy units that are coming at you. And in order to deal with the additional burden on on the players forces from that we've added this wide toolkit to allow players to experiment how they're going to actually deal with that challenge so you've got your towers and barricades to the barricades obviously to redirect those enemy units around the battlefield the towers to whittle down their numbers before they come to blows with you um, you can bring on reinforcements to bolster your your initial forces you can add upgrades to to increase their, their capabilities and you've got the replenishments obviously to keep them at, at full fighting force so like i say it's, it links back to the campaign uh, and and the, the sort of scale of the challenge that you're taking on when you enter one of these these battles okay great thank you so it sounds like this this a lot of the new ui elements are unique to just this mode including the expanded winds of magic uh well, just, actually... to just to clarify um with the Winds of Magic, so the Winds of Magic system has been uh, revisited uh, for Warhammer 3. Uh, kind of the main change that you'll see is that the UI looks a bit different, and uh, you'll have uh, a linear rate of uh, mana recharge, uh, whereas previously, like when you cast spells, the recharge would slow down. Uh, so now we've in Warhammer 3, we moved to a more simple system where you gain, I think the Base rate is like one, one mana per nine seconds or so. Actually, one mana per ten seconds. So it's just a very predictable pattern of how the mana is filling into your pool. And we've also done a lot of work in just to making the tooltips for uh, spells and abilities more clear. Uh, so you'll, for example, now be able to see damage numbers on you know, spells like Final Transmutation or or the, like the, how much damage uh, a Vortex spell will deal per entity, and stuff like that. Okay, great. Uh, awesome. Thank you very much. Turn, you got something? Yeah, I was going to ask. So obviously we got to play Kislev as the faction that goes into the realm of uh, Korn there, but is that going to be something, let's say, for example, if we head on over to like Lustria, or factions like the Lizardmen, and 
you know, those other factions going to have the, you know, a similar mechanic where they can go to the realm of the gods? And if so, will they have their own unique towers or is it going to be similar in terms of aesthetics? What is that going to look like? So this is, as I mentioned, it's, it's kind of linked into the, the core narrative and, and mechanic mm -hmm. of, of uh, Warhammer 3. So um, obviously we, we've announced six races that we're, we're going with um, from the start, uh, obviously yes. the widest and largest array of, of races that we've done in the series to date. So Kislev and Cathay, obviously, we're massively excited to mm -hmm. bring those to people and the Games Workshop uh, have, have fully spec those out as a faction. They've obviously been present in the law almost from the word go, but not fully specced out. And they've been a bit of a aficionado's favorite, but, you know, without ever getting that full full treatment so we're really excited when gw announced to us that they were you know on the verge of of going through that process and we were you know had the opportunity to look over the shoulders of their designers as as they put all that content in and then you know had the opportunity to work out how we were going to get those into our game with the right level of authenticity and overall fun obviously as well so uh, and then you got your four chaos races as well so mm -hmm. Really, these these um, survival battles, like I say, they're, they're linked to the core narrative of Warhammer 3. So they they primarily um, apply to the races that are present at the start of Warhammer 3. Got it. Understood. I can add on to that. So the, the barricades that are used uh, in the battle are, are unique to the realm of Korn. So, you know, they, they've got the different uh, buildings around them, you know, different skulls, icons and such. Um, that that is unique to Corn, and the, the towers as well um, that you build have the projectiles of the faction that you play as. So where you play this oh, Kislev, got it. Okay. Um, the projectiles there will match, you know, what what Kislev can pack, yeah, like frostbite. Um, so whatnot. Yeah, so that's that's all per faction. So you know, if you play the campaign uh, as a different faction, you go into that same battle, you'll have your own set of uh, projectiles for those towers as well. Understood. Got it. Thank you. I think for my next question, uh, something that I would love to see, and I'm curious if it's being considered or approached, is will the survival system have like its own menu in that if I log into the game, will there be a place I can go if I just want to enjoy playing a survival battle, say I can maybe pick a race and design an army and then play it? Because that mode is exceedingly fun, and I would be kind of heartbroken if it was locked only behind certain campaign restrictions. So the mode, uh, the one that you've seen there is, is, yeah, just the demo, but we, we offer this in campaign, custom, and multiplayer. Uh, so it's, it's basically giving you what you're saying there. You know, you can pick any faction, and then it's down to you to choose your gameplay style, whether you go wide, tall, you want to go tower, defense uh, And again, the multiplayer, you know, you can play this cooperatively as well. Oh, so okay. that, again, is going to mix up all, all types of gameplay. I, I, yeah, I can begin to think of you know what what you could come up with that's fantastic thank you perfect um the next question is obviously in the uh the pre-interview we had uh you guys probably aren't able to talk about this yet but you mentioned that there was an, a new multiplayer game mode i believe it was called domination or something is there any light you can shed on that uh yeah um, well i suppose i'll take it um uh, and james feel free to add stuff if i'm miss out on anything uh so we're introducing a new multiplayer game mode in Warhammer 3 um, called Domination Battles. Um, kind of the key takeaways with it is that we're introducing capture points that decide the outcome of the battle. So, you know, you hold the capture points, and if you hold them for long enough, uh, you win the battle. And the other big twist uh, that we're introducing here is uh, dynamic reinforcements. Mm. So kind of like how you were able to bring on reinforcements in the survival battle. Uh, in Domination wow. Battles, you'll be able to bring on new units to the battlefield, allowing you to kind of, you know, react to what's happening on the battlefield. So, if, you know, you end up in that situation where the enemy just has missile units left and is guiding you, you know, you can just bring on cavalry and uh, you know, try to smash them in that way. And what we really wanted to do with this is, you know, we've read a lot of feedback about, you know, the, you know, the camping and the kiting that you might end up having in a normal Total War multiplayer mm. battle. Yeah, for uh, and we kind of wanted to, you know, a give you tools to, you know, or basically we wanted to give you something to focus on, something to kind of fight over, so that you know you can't just camp uh, in the corner or you know just keep running away, but there's something to fight over. 
and we also wanted to ensure that the battle is less of a coin toss yeah. in the sense that you know or build roulette uh, uh, so that you kind of have the means to react to what's happening on the battlefield and you know just give give more chances for players to you know mount a comeback from a bad situation got it so you will pick an army going in but as as of course the battle progresses uh you'll have you know resources essentially and resources do they come from the capture points or do you just get fed periodic points over the course uh, of the battle? We will be able to tell you more details about it at a late, later stage. Uh, we're keeping it fairly generic at this stage, but... Yeah, sorry. certainly. <laughs> will there be a quick battle queue system for that? Is that something that you just queue up for? Or? Um, I mean, that that is the current plan. Got it. Uh, Understood. We, we need to see how you know, things go in when we're doing internal testing and so forth. Uh, no problem. Uh, Perfect. We, uh, that is my my personal take is that it is an improvement on land battles, so it should be the quick battle mode. But things may change before release. So. Perfect. Yeah, the core design intent <clears throat> behind those battles is is to make the battles more engaging by allowing for greater versatility, and it gives players a, a chance of turning the tide of battle in their favor. You know, if things have gone against them early doors. Um, there's always a chance to turn things around and, and mount a comeback. I think, yeah, I think that's that's like a potentially a very big step forward, you know, because with traditional multiplayer, you know, we we have a community system with rules in place that do address some of the issues with, you know, kiting uh, excessively and, you know, the obviously the ability to draw games. But I really do like that there's like a finite victory condition via the capturable objectives. I think that's quite healthy it, it makes it like a closed environment that doesn't need as much policing so yeah that's that's pretty huge for sure so happy yeah to and i mean when we also... to... sorry james yeah. carry on oh, i was gonna say like you've also got this being like the third game in the series you know warhammer one and two has had its time yeah but for warhammer three you you're gonna have eventually all of this content come together and you know i, I played multiplayer myself and hmm. you know some games you can feel like from the offset you're you know on the back foot and you're like oh it's it can be a bit intimidating, and especially if we want to bring new players into this, this yeah, game it's now, not very welcoming. Yeah. The content, it's yeah. it's really there to try and you know get the new players and the more experienced players in the same battle, and everyone can engage, and you know it keeps the battle going. Whereas in a land battle, it's just you know I've taken out your front units, and now I'm mopping up, and it's you know it's it's not a great feeling to have. So this is really there to try and engage with players in a, a better better way. Yeah, it's it's pretty exciting. I mean, it'll be interesting to see how. How and if it potentially takes over, you know, as the standard multiplayer format, right? When we run our tournaments and things like that. I mean, if it's, yeah, it's, it's exciting. It, it definitely requires a lot less policing with the capturable objectives. So that's cool. Glad to hear, guys. Yeah, and I'm, I'm really, you know, when we, we sat down initially to kind of talk about this, obviously the third game in the series, there's always a sneaking temptation to play it safe. We've, you know, the t first two games have really been very successful and very well received and it would be very easy to just go with more of the same but we wanted to keep pushing the series onward and breaking new ground and you know finish off in the best possible way we could so um, we want to provide good experiences that enrich all areas of the game so the campaign new new battle types there so that within the context of a 200 turn plus campaign you know how it is at 3 a.m uh, another open field battle um, or, you know, a totally new battle type suddenly feels very refreshing. You know, you're refreshing yeah, the players, players' palette and, and, and keeping things, you know, fresh. So, um, yeah, just basically wanting to push push on to new heights, really. Yeah. Well, thanks for, thanks for answering the question there. That was awesome, man. Yeah, that sounds absolutely fantastic. I'm really excited to see all that. Um, I think for my question, if uh, I know we're still super duper early and like the <laughs> earliest fogs of getting to really see what the game's all about. Um, during um, some of the stuff we've been talking about, we did hear about some changes to various types of campaign battles to kind of, uh, I assume, alleviate the, the constant open land battles. And one of the things that we had mentioned are minor, the new minor settlement battles. Are y'all able to give us any hints or glimpses into what we might be looking at for new minor settlements? We can give you a little glimpse, not not too much. We'll be going into those again in more more detail later. This is the trouble we have. We have so much new stuff to to share with you. Um, 
obviously if we try to go too deep with everything it becomes overwhelming but yeah we've we've um we've included minor settlement battles in this the third game in the series um so they they take place around the the footprint of a minor settlement some of them are 360 degrees so um they're a great kind of midway point between a land and a siege battle real mixture of different layouts and so on and some unique features as well so we really can't wait until uh, we're allowed to actually tell you a little bit more detail about that but yeah definitely a, a really strong addition to the series awesome i look forward to it so uh my next question was pertaining to uh co-op campaign and like head-to-head -head campaign are there going to be any new features in game three for either of those game modes well, the co-op campaign is is definitely going to to be a thing. Again, mm -hmm. it's something I'm not really allowed to go into today. But yeah, we got some uh -huh. exciting exciting stuff coming up well. on that front. So um, basically, just keep keep an eye over the next few months. Um, like I say, sure. we've got so much amazing stuff to share with you, so, and that's definitely one of the things on the agenda. Very cool. Very cool. Um... Another question, uh, multiplayer, the, obviously you guys are familiar with the latter uh, currently. I think I think it's probably run through the Steam engine, but I'm not sure. But is there going to be an update to the ladder system for multiplayer in Total War Warhammer 3? Um, I am not entirely sure whether I'm allowed to go into this. Um, yeah, just, just to <laughs> be safe. That's a good, that's a good say, thing. Yeah, I'll that's have to say, <laughs> <laughs> we will go into this again later in the campaign. You got it. Sorry, guys. Okay. No, got, no, it got, answers I, my question, so <laughs> we're good. I got a lore question, and it's it's eating at me, and I have a bad feeling you're not going to be able to tell me the answer, but I got to <laughs> ask. So, in all of the all of the articles I've read and everything I've heard about, there's been a lot of talk about how the main catalyst, kind of like how for game two the catalyst was the the Skaven Warpstone meteor. For this game, it's about that there's a god that's been mortally wounded. And all the races are trying to either take advantage of it or alleviate this dying god. And so my question is, do, are we allowed to have any hints or name drops? Or like, do we know what culture it's from or who this dying god is who's been wounded? Um, hmm, hints. Well, all I would say is that there is, once again, a very strong core narrative to the campaign, which is very much connected with the you know the the main driver for the campaign and and each of the the six races that we've announced have got a very intimate connection with that narrative um it does have to do with with gods and and deaths of gods and so on um but e each of those factions have got their own take on why they're getting involved in that process and these survival battles are all part and parcel of that hence why we've mm. decided you know to up the ante by adding survival battles to the series but um, I mean, obviously, the, the six races that we've added to the game, you know, super excited to, to see people engage with those. And each of them, we, uh, as we've, you know, embraced the asymmetry that we did in the first two games, we've continued that in this one. Um, so that obviously provides us with a load of scope to do some really interesting stuff with their mechanics, with their kind of motivations, the rosters that you see on the battlefield and everything. And um, Especially, um, particularly from my personal point of view, that, that Kislev and Cafe, adding those and fully fleshing those out, um, I can't wait until people, you know, get to play with those two factions. Yeah, I'm, <laughs> yeah, I'm very excited myself. So my only, my only follow-up question to that, and if you can't answer it, that's fine. Are you able to tell us, is the god the same for all the campaigns, or is it a different god depending on who you play? Well, the all of the factions have a link to the same core narrative i can't really go into too much more detail than that because of spoilers and so on but okay, there, gotcha. there, there, <laughs> there is a, there is a common thread that kind of runs through and our, our narrative guys have done a fantastic job of creating this really compelling and and driving um force that you know really motivates you to to get behind events in the campaign and um it's it's all about that challenge of providing players with with um, challenges in different kind of time frames that makes strategy gaming so good so you'll have a number of short-term objectives you're 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 
reaching for and then a, a, a few more medium term ones which may be linked to the short terms and then obviously the the overall long term objective and it's that blend of those those three time frames i think that adds the charm to strategy game it certainly does for me anyway and uh, by adding these core narratives and, and campaign me mechanics i think that's kind of uh, the missing piece of the jigsaw that we 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 provided in this series awesome great thank you so much uh, some of the features we saw in the uh, survival battle, like barriers and tower building, I assume, I mean, it's, uh, don't assume, but I'm hoping that will be part of uh, siege battles, just general siege. Is that something that we'll see, you think? Well, there's certainly some some new mechanics, uh, a lot of new mechanics mm -hmm. to uh, siege battles and uh, the minor settlement battles as well. Again, I'm not really allowed to go into too much detail, but there's, again, there's some really exciting stuff that we're we're waiting with bated breath really to go into in greater depth uh, as the following weeks and months pass. Sounds good. Perfect. A uh, quick spell question I had. One of the, sp the spell that easily I think caught everyone's attention just because of how powerful it was, but for me in particular how it functioned was Katarin's super ice spell that has the four stages. And one of the things I was curious about was that that's something very, very new. I think this is the first time we've seen a spell that actively transforms over the course of its cast, which not only makes it exceedingly powerful just because of how long it lasts and how many abilities it can unleash, but it also looks really, really cool. Um, is that are is there going to be any looking back at the spell lores that already exist in the game and trying to modernize them a little bit, or is is it kind of like the spell lores going forward may have some new gimmicks? And maybe if there's time going back, or that might not just be something that's on the table? Well, I think one of the advantages, um, when we first sat down and looked at the mass of, of law that Games Workshop were created uh, in their game system uh, that makes it feel like a real universe, uh, and we realized that we were never going to be able to do all of that in one game and do justice to it. Um, one of the advantages of, of our decision to carve this up into a, a trilogy of tentpole releases supported by DLC and free LC, obviously, is it allows us to um, go back over things, you know, as and when appropriate. So we are constantly looking at that and looking at feedback from the fans and everything. So, I mean, at the moment, we're, we're primarily focusing on, on the Warhammer 3 content, but that's not to say that, you know, we might go back and, and have a look at things based on feedback and our own kind of play experience and stuff. But you're right, um, constantly looking to add new mechanics and content. And, and Oscar's actually the one behind the spell that you're particularly talking about. It's by adding that kind of new feel to things that it keeps things fresh, which uh, to me is, is kind of key, particularly within, within the context of, you know, the, the epic length campaigns we're talking about, that these battles take, take place within. Yeah, uh, just to add to your uh, point there. So we do, like even during the development of Warhammer 3, look back at the older content and, for example, with the example of spells, you know, if if I find something that, you know, if we, for example, you know, created a new mechanic that helps us deliver a better spell or kind of match the theme and function of the spell better and kind of refresh the gameplay of certain spells, we will, uh, you know, look into, you know, adding those mechanics back towards the older content in Warhammer 3. So, like, for example, I have have ended up reworking uh, some of the old spells as well. Uh, not too many of them, so in most part, a lot of the work we do is still focused on the new content, but some of the spells that you've seen in, in Warhammer 2 will have changed for Warhammer 3. Awesome, great. I look forward to it. Uh, one of my last questions here was actually pertaining to uh, an army painter. Are we going to get some sort of army customization that we can do for campaign or for you know quick battles? Is that something that's perhaps being discussed around the table? It's certainly something we've discussed. Um, mm -hmm. Technically, it's it's very difficult for us to achieve, um, sure. given the the length of time that um, we've been working on the trilogy, and obviously our tech has has changed as we've gone on. So. Um, it's certainly something that we're constantly looking at. Um, at the moment, we have no plans to add that just purely due to technical limitations rather than sure. any lack of will to do it. Sounds good. Uh, I do have two little uh, questions here if we've got the time for them. Uh, one is kind of a selfish question, but so um, 
do y'all have any idea if we're gonna have any news in the nearish future about like collector's editions or uh like knowing like kind of what the situation is on like pre-orders and all that stuff i have to be honest i have no idea but um i imagine there will be some plans that somebody's putting together somewhere i, I don't know that for a fact unfortunately all right, thanks. And then my second question is a bit of a meme in my community and something I care very personally about. It, can y'all just like blink to me electronically? <laughs> is 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 Katarin's dad still alive? Is Boris Ursus still alive? Well, who knows? Is he even dead? He just disappeared off into the waste as far as I know. So I like that answer. I like that answer. Thank you. 